The controversial Russian political philosopher, ideologue, and activist Alexander Dugin has recently been posting about America's great revolution. I mean, what's taking place now in the United States. And on the election day, Alexander Dugin called this the bro revolution. Now, we have to spend a little bit of time talking about what that means. You should know, too, that he recently posted that Russia itself is looking at this bro revolution and wants it for itself. You know, this means a change of the elites. This means a new injection of vitality, not only of masculinity, but also of common sense, of vigor, vim, strength, and all the rest of it. So let me just take a moment here to clarify for you quickly the characteristics of the bro revolution that now I think not only Alexander Dugin in Russia, but people all around the world are looking at with awe, amazement, and hopefully a desire to emulate. <laughs> Now, you may need a quick reminder about where the United States was just a short time ago. Many people who were analyzing this from the point of view of political theory or political philosophy had considered it, for example, a gynocracy, okay, a long-housed political community. In Dugan's terms, the rule of Sibylle, the great mother. In other words, it was a kind of national cult of castration, of effeminacy, but not even genuine femininity of the demasculinized and absolutely unmanly rule of the nation. Now, it's just bizarre. Take a moment down to go down memory lane and think about the images from COVID. Think about who had been in positions of health and safety in the United States. You know, you're going to see examples of degenerates and freaks. That's what America was, and that's what America was becoming. Moreover, that's what America was exporting. And it's one of the reasons why there was a rabid anti-Americanism in the world, especially among traditionalist powers, especially among those who look at this postmodern freak show and say anything but that. But Trump won. And it's not just a change of administrations. It's a change of direction for the zeitgeist, for human history, for sure for America, and perhaps for humanity. And what shifted? Well, it's the end of the days of the longhouse. It's the end of the rule of the great mother. It's the end of the postmodern freak show. That's for sure. Now, these things may still exist, but they're going to exist now on the margins. You know, so much of the postmodern project was about taking what's marginalized and making it sort of central and taking what used to be central and pushing it away as totalitarian or fascist or whatever the case is. That's why so many people were trying to understand why is everything normal called fascist? All right, that was part of the project. But now the freak show is going to go back out on the margins in some sense where it belongs. And so after a long period, you have a restoration. You know, there's a famous line that you can chase nature out you can expel nature with a pitchfork nevertheless it returns we've been living in the era of nature expelled we're now living in the era of nature returning that means nature is healing okay that means human nature the nature of political order and political life we're no longer dealing with these crazy fantasies figments of our imagination now don't get me wrong there are things that can still become obstacles Although, frankly, Trump faced so many obstacles and still made it through. Musk doesn't seem like the person who's really stopped by obstacles. So despite, you know, the disclaimer that there are obstacles in the way of this bro revolution, I believe that the people who are at its helm now will have no difficulty in navigating those obstacles. So again, you have real men are back. And it's not just, oh, well, what about the, you know, it's not only men, right? Trump's chief of staff is a woman and there are people in and around the Trump world, and there are many people who supported Trump who are women. So the bro revolution doesn't just mean, you know, women get lost. It's just going to be manly men doing man things. It means that you no longer have this skewed perspective. Again, it wasn't even the perspective of femininity. It was the perspective of the cult of the castrated male, of the effeminized, okay? It's a little bit of a different thing. So there's still a place for women. Many of you may have seen the meme of, I think it was, what, um, a Tim Waltz's daughter on one hand, or, or okay, I don't, 
I'll put it up on screen here so you'll know. And uh, and Trump's granddaughter. And it was like, you know, this these are two different images of femininity. You know, these are two different images of what it is to be a woman. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? What's the future sort of type? And it's not just like, you know, who do you find better looking? That's not the issue here. The issue is what's represented, what's symbolized. In some way, these different attitudes towards masculinity and femininity, they are allegorizations of ways of life, you know, that include big things here. So Dugan in Russia is looking at what's happening in America as something unprecedented. It's a new America. It's no longer the America that you could hate. As I said, you know, there's been a hostile attitude towards the America that represented global liberal fascism or global liberal totalitarianism, the America that wanted to make the world gay all corners of the world, okay? I'm not saying anything against gay people, but the project of wanting to transform the entire world into the diversity, equity, and inclusion mantra, you know, that was just something different. You know, those days, from what we can see so far, are over. Now, this issue of the history of the notion of manliness, in some sense, as I said, it's rejection and its return. I do teach that in my school. I have a course, Philosophical Analysis of Manliness, and it's an it's an important topic for many thinkers, including Dugan. I want to here just give you one little thing to chew on, which is that uh, Dugan has a model of three basic worldviews, okay? World configurations, world orientations. Let's just call them worldviews for now. He calls them logoi, the plural of logos, okay? Three comprehensive ways of construing, interpreting, or viewing the world. And the mythical name for these three is Apollo, Dionysus, and Sibylle. Okay, three ancient gods and, 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 and goddesses in the case of Sibylle. Okay, so Apollo, you have some sense of Apollo, the light of uh, the, a god of verticality, of light, of masculinity, of ascent, of the, you know, of the sun in the sky. You have Dionysus, a liminal figure who goes to the underworld, okay? He's represented at times by the midnight sun. So he's kind of uh, less straightforward than Apollo. He's not just at the top of the mountain. He doesn't just live in the daylight. He also experiences the night. Again, these are typologies, allegories, metaphors, symbols. And Sibylle, who is the titanic underground goddess, the great mother. And in fact, historically, if you look it up, C-Y-B-E-L-E, -E, Sibylle, her, uh, the cult members of hers, they actually did have a cult of castration. So it was a fitting symbol, you know, for the era of materialism and forced effeminization and a sort of anti-Platonic, anti-Aristotelian modern enlightenment project, weirdly enough, okay? So there's, Dugan writes a lot about this topic. I also teach the book in which he discusses this book series called No Omakia. Some of that is in my course on manliness, but I'm just giving you some concepts here to work with. So in some sense, the bro revolution is the end of the era of Sibylle, the end of the rule of the great mother. She hasn't disappeared. She hasn't been killed, annihilated. She just no longer rules. She's no longer in ascendancy. So what does that mean? What do we have now? We've got the return of the Apollonian. Strong men, action, energy, insight, understanding, but not, again, not the sort of nocturnal insight, not the sort of like solitary mystical insight necessarily, but big popular transparency, okay? Apollo, think about Ap Apollo in the sky, the big illuminated transparent sky. And then you have someone like Musk coming into government and Vivek coming into government and promising that they're going to have transparency here. They're going to be lean. They're going to cut the fat. They're going to trim the fat, right? They're going to give you strength and power, efficiency. And they're going to do it with visibility. This is all very Apollonian. So in some sense, for those theorists among you who like this kind of thing, if we've gone past the age of Sibylle, we've, that's it. Her reign of terror is over. Apollo is back. Okay, Dionysus, it's going to be a question. 
what happens to Dionysus? What's the role of Dionysus? You know, I did a video reading of Alexander Dugan's article on psychedelic Trumpism on this channel not long ago. In some sense, you could say there's nothing psychedelic about Apollo. That's probably an overstatement. But really, Dionysus, you could say, in this world of uh, terminological parallelisms, is the unconscious, the subconscious, the psychedelic, as I said, the transgressive, all of that. Uh, so you got to see elements, elements maybe of, um, you know, dark MAGA is Dionysian. You know, dark means Dionysian. In fact, I told you that Dugan's three logoi, they have this mythical name, Apollo, Dionysus, and Sibylle. But he also just calls them straightforwardly, the light logo, so that's Apollo, the black logo, so that's Sibylle, and the dark logo, so that's right in the middle. So I think that you can interpret the dark MAGA tendencies within Trumpism as psychedelic or Dionysian Trumpism. And somehow the orange man, you know, and maybe this is also, if you're going to do these color parallelisms, we can even put Bitcoin into the equation here. All of that is the solar Trump, the Apollonian Trump, the orange, yellow, and blue too. Because again, the sky, the sun, that glow, okay, that heavenly glow. So you've got dark MAGA and you've got Apollonian MAGA and the end of woke left liberalism, the end of that global cult of castration, the end of the rule of Sibylle. So this is what's in the background to some extent when Dugan writes about the bro revolution. Uh, take a look at that. Okay, I teach, as I said, this course on manliness in my school, a lot of courses on Dugan, million videos on all of these topics on this channel. But I wanted to give you a quick update because I saw that a few of you were asking when I posted on the community chat here, Dugan's line about um, Russia in some sense liking and wanting to emulate the bro revolution. You're thinking, bro revolution, what's that? We Googled the term, we couldn't find anything about it. You have to see, you know, follow the discourse here, right? If you're, if you're, or I'll give you these summaries, right? But if you were an election watcher and a Duganist or somebody interested in Dugan, you saw his reaction in real time. You continue to see it because every single day is cementing the impression that what happened on election day was a revolution. Every appointment, every new statement. I mean, you don't even know where Biden and you don't even know where America's current president is because America's current president is not just president-elect Trump for January. No, he's running the show now. His team is running the show now. The world has changed. It's Trump's world. It's Musk's world, it's the bro revolution, it's tech bros and philosophy bros, it's health bros and fitness bros. Again, this doesn't leave women out of the equation, it just somehow restores them to their dignity and no longer forces them under this reign of terror of the liberal totalitarian cult of castration and the postmodern freak show. I'll put some pictures up to remind you that in fact that is the world we were living in until just recently when Trump won. Okay, guys, I hope you found that helpful. There's a lot more that we can say on this, a lot more that we will say on this. By the way, Fukuyama and Dugan, all of that's going to be interesting. But I think for now, for this summary of the bro revolution, that's enough. So I'm Michael Millerman, millermanschool.com. I'll put all the links in the description. Follow me wherever you want. Subscribe, like, share. Take care. Be well. Goodbye.